Um, so when I was asked to speak about WordPress as a CMS, um, the topic kind of got under my skin a little bit because people have this idea that WordPress is only there for blog style websites or blogs and that it's a blogging system and the truth is it was a blogging system a few years ago but it's grown into something that you can now consider a fully fledged content man management system. Um, so that's why I scratched out the as because as implies that you have to do some special backflip or acrobatics to turn WordPress into a content management system. And that's just not the case. So quickly, I've already gone through a bit of that. I've, I've decided to present on a website for a few reasons. Number one, I'm not great with PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm a WordPress guy. So this is a WordPress site. I could put together slides on WordPress quicker than PowerPoint. Um, and I only had one day to prepare and I had some problems with PowerPoint on the Mac. So this is where I am right now. Uh, might also be because I didn't get much sleep and some of the decisions I made in the last few days weren't so great. So forgive me for that. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got a blog post for each slide. I may skip over some of them if I gauge that you guys are not interested in that. If you want me to speak a little bit more about a specific topic, let me know. Um, try not to stop me too many times while I'm going, but if you need to, you, you're welcome to do that um, so that I can give you kind of what you're looking for. Okay, so to the next slide. Also, something that you have to be in mind is that this website is currently live. It's on the colab.com forward slash WordPress CMS. So if you wanted to access the site now or later on to see some of the links that I'm going to be speaking, sharing with you guys, some of the videos, some of the content, you can go to the site. You can also comment on each post, ask a question, uh, have a discussion with me afterwards if you want to. Okay. So WordPress is a CMS. Um, I did a bit of looking around for articles written on WordPress as a CMS presentations. And I found a ton of them. Most of them from like 2008, 2007. This one, uh, this is a picture over here of a WordCamp in Hong Kong that the founder of WordPress <coughs> presentation, he was giving on WordPress as a CMS. And that was in 2009. So that's two years ago. That topic was being discussed. So I don't think we need to discuss that too much. But... In terms of what a CMS is, um, someone in the next room was telling me, if anybody asks you if WordPress is a CMS, tell them to log in, publish a post, and then experience the beauty of WordPress as a CMS. Because a CMS essentially is a system that manages certain types of content, and WordPress does that. Blog posts, pages, other types of content that I'm going to introduce to you guys. Um, this slide, the second slide, basically has a link to some details about what technically a CMS is. I'm not so interested in all those technical things, but basically WordPress does most of it for you. Okay? Um, why WordPress? Uh, I've already discussed that. Okay, next slide. So basically a few bits and pieces about why everybody's jumping on the WordPress bandwagon is one of the main things people are going to tell you about WordPress, if you don't know, if you ask them why WordPress is ease. Ease. Everybody says ease of use, easy to do this, easy to do that, easy to slap together presentation in one day um, without PowerPoint skills. So, and the system has been built on that principle, making it easy for people to publish content. And it is really one of the easiest systems. I don't know if anybody here has tried to use Joomla. I've, I've heard one or two people mentioning Joomla or some other very well-known content management system. Um, they don't really, they don't come close to WordPress in terms of the speed at which you can publish your content, whether it's multimedia or text content. Okay. Um, a couple of links on this slide. Uh, the first link, 
has got to do with a um, online freelancing network called Elance, and they published some survey with regard to skills demand on their network. And they said that WordPress was second only to PHP development, which is internationally one of the, basically the top skill demand in terms of web development. So everything's built on PHP, including WordPress as well. Um, but just below that is WordPress on Odisk as well, which is another one of these. Both of these are huge communities of <coughs> freelance developers, writers, designers. Um, the skills that people are looking for are WordPress development skills, and that's increasing by the month, not by the year. Okay? Um, and that's, those two posts were found on the WordPress uh, website, basically some PR um, writing. But they're not just blowing their own trumpets. Um, everybody else is speaking about the same thing. So Google has a CMS usage survey that they published where WordPress basically comes out. Doesn't come out. Okay. <laughs> so that link's obviously not working right now. Um, I will be going through this and making sure that everything is linked correctly. I think some of these things are not loading because of the connection here as well. Um, and another web tech survey of CMS usage has, has found WordPress to be overwhelmingly above all the other content management systems is the one that people are choosing now more than ever. Okay, a couple of stats. Last night, I'm not sure what the time was, but I copied and pasted this. Um, the stats for WordPress usage was 58 million and something websites. Um, worldwide, and WordPress.com claims to host, host half of those websites. Okay, they've had uh, two hundred and odd thousand downloads of plugins, and thirty-seven, sorry, two hundred and fifteen million downloads of plugins, and thirty-seven million odd downloads of themes from the from only from the theme and plugin repository. So people are using the system all the time for all kinds of weird and wonderful things, doing last minute presentations as well. And there's a couple of awards that WordPress won for CMS. Okay, I've structured this website so that each of these posts follow the next. And I've also created a few categories. I'll explain to you the categories a bit later. But I just want to skip through it. So why use WordPress? Um, you guys obviously know a bit about why to use WordPress. That's why you guys are here. Um, I said to you, um, ease of use, freely available, um, basically resources, themes, plugins. But besides the freely available stuff, and some of the guys next door are talking about some more advanced kind of development and skills and stuff. The resources available in terms of skills, in, in terms of developers, in terms of being able to have a problem solved with either very low cost or free in many cases has caused a lot of people to jump onto this and take it with both hands. Because if you wanted to find developers to fix your Drupal site, you're going to have to scratch around quite, for quite some time to find somebody that's not busy or that's not basically working in a company or something like that. Okay? With WordPress, they all over the place. Okay, so in terms of the CMS-ness of WordPress, basically when people say CMS, WordPress as or WordPress is, they're trying to say that it's not just about blogs. We want a website that's not a blog. Maybe it has a blog. Um, but our site should have this thing floating there and then these links over here and something else there and a column down here. Basically, your layout needs to be different to that. Uh, blog posts and sidebar layout um, that we're all familiar with. And a lot of the time it's got to do with layout. Sometimes it has to do with the type of clientele you're dealing with. People don't want to look at something that looks like a blog. They want it to look more professional. Um, in many cases it's about the way the site looks, but also in some cases the way it functions, how it integrates with, for example, your CRM system, or how it integrates with your email marketing system, or any other kind of system that you want to integrate with. Um, 
So before you dive into this whole using WordPress as your CMS, there's a couple of things that you need to do. And this has got to do not only with WordPress, but with uh, web design in general. Okay? So I've put this image up there to basically just tell you, wait, just hold on. Before you dive in and buy a theme, before you download that free theme, before you even hire a designer necessarily, you need to ask yourself some questions. Why am I doing this? Why, why do I want the site? What is the purpose of the site? What am I trying to achieve? Who am I speaking to? All these different things. And a lot of the time, uh, um, companies run out there and they heard, we need a WordPress blog. Can you do WordPress blogs for us? They don't know what a blog is sometimes. They don't know what the purpose of it is. And they don't necessarily know that they could use WordPress for something other than a blog, for the corporate internet, for that matter, if they wanted to. Um, so you need to ask these questions and have a clear idea of what you want to do. And when I get asked to design websites uh, by different types of clients, I usually break it down into three types of categories. I ask them why you want to do this, who you're speaking to, who are you, and then I say I need three types of information from you. I need to know your design, basically your design needs. Okay? What do you want this to look like? Because if I start talking about uh, functionality and about content before design, clients, they get a bit like, why is this guy talking about all these things now? He wants to know some you know, secret information about us and stuff. Clients want to know most of the time about the design, so I put that first, but that's not necessarily always the correct order. But I asked him about design. What do you want it to look like? Why is your brand like this or like that? The style, the color, fonts, those type of things. If you don't ask these questions up front, so you may have a special need for a certain kind of font on your site. If, if you choose a certain kind of theme, you may not be able to execute that font because of some scripts, some kind of uh, images, or some kind of <coughs> elements that are in the site um, that conflicts with the font that you want to install in the site. So having these things answered up front, very important. Functional needs, next. What do you want the site to do? What must it do when somebody comes there? It must spit out this to them. It must pull them in here. It must provide this kind of information. It must do that, do this, answer a question, whatever the case may be. Okay? And then lastly, content needs. Besides functionality, functionality could be like they must be able to buy something. They must be able to ask a question. They must be able to calculate something, these type of things. Um, then you get content. What kind of pages? What goes in the pages? Are there images? What kind of images? How must people interact with the content? That kind of thing. And that includes your menu structures and those kind of things. So you need to ask lots of questions. You need to sit down with your marketing team, ask the questions about why, sit down with your developer, your designer, ask the questions, why do we need to do this? Why do we need to have that? Take the unnecessary things and put them one side and focus on what's the priority things. Once you have that list of priorities, must look like this, work like this, must contain these words, these pictures, then you can say, okay, now I can actually choose the type of theme, the type of plugin, the type of things that I need in the site. Many times we set up a theme and we realize, oh, I need the thing to be over there. And then because the theme doesn't have that thing there, it's like now I need to pay somebody to take this thing out and change it and stuff like that. So you go through a kind of roundabout process. Okay, so ask the questions that are important up front before you dive in. Many ways to skin a camel. Okay, I haven't actually skinned a camel myself. Um, I've sat on the camel. Um, you need to ask yourself firstly, do you want to skin the camel? Is it important to do that? <laughs> but what I mean when I say many ways to skin the camel, it's got to do with the approaches that you could use to set up your website. There's many different, I uh, want to call it schools of thought. In this room, we have a certain school of thought in terms of how we need to approach our website. If you go through that door there, you're going to find a different story. And maybe somewhere in the middle is where, you know, the, the good safe ground is. Somewhere between the developers and the people that are doing the marketing. They understand how it works. You understand the purpose of it, that kind of thing. So there's four main approaches that you could use for developing your website 
whatever the website might be. Uh, I had some of these as links to the actual post, but for some reason those links are gone. I'll put them in later if you're going to go through the site to, you know, to get the information. Custom development entails, right, we know exactly what we want. We've gone through this process. We've also interviewed a few developers. We've asked people, who's your developer? What did he do? Yes, this guy gave us good service. We trust him. We like him. That kind of stuff. Okay. We hire this guy, we, we bring him in and we say, we want A, B, C, D. Or it could be a company, it could be a group of people that you bring together. But they are going to develop your theme from complete scratch. They may have a designer on the team as well. He's going to design everything. You want this little heart floating there and pulsing like that. And you want it to then scroll down when they scroll down, all that kind of stuff. And they do that visually for you. And they code everything for you. And the functionality they build into the theme. So if you want a Twitter feed over there, you don't need to go scratch around for a plugin that does this, a plugin that does that. In the other room, uh, one of the presentations was about not using too many plugins, and there's a reason for that as well. I'll speak about that a bit later. So custom development, I would say, is the ideal route, but it's a bit expensive, um, and not everybody has the budget for that, or the time for that matter. You may have a little project and you want to set up the website ASAP. You don't have budget, you don't have time, you want to do it yourself. So custom development's out in that scenario. Um, the next approach would be, I would say, the opposite end of the spectrum. Free and pre... Uh, sorry, no. Free themes would be the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. Free themes you can download off the WordPress themes uh, directory, and there's a lot of junk on there, lots of junk. All look the same, column on the one side, big fat post on the other side, and it's fine for, you know, your hobby, blogger, whatever the case may be. Some free themes are really great, and uh, <coughs> some of the guys that are in the other room, they develop and sell themes. Um, they have some free themes on their sites, like Woo Themes and Obox. I'm not sure if there's any other theme development companies. Um, but you can find a really great free theme out there if you know what you want and you find something that matches perfect. Okay? And that's very, very nice for quick kind of setup. But then you may need something that has some special kind of flavor or special kind of feature over here. And then premium themes come in. So you have to decide between free and premium themes. Now, some free themes they're on the level of a premium theme, but they're very rare, okay? Most of the free themes are very simple, kind of, uh, you know, not very well designed. And then you get companies that create stuff like Woo Themes themes. You go on this site, you'll find there's a corporate one. There's one for a restaurant. There's one for a help desk. I'll show you a few examples of those. So you will need to decide how quickly do I need this? Do I have money for a paid for theme? Maybe up to $100. Not, not very expensive if, you know, if, if it's a company type of project. But if it's a personal thing, you know, just your hobby, sometimes you don't even spend that amount, so you go with the free. So you need to make these decisions based on your needs, based on what you have at your disposal. Okay. Um, and then you also get the difference between premium and uh, free plugins. Most plugins are free. Okay, and, and the WordPress plugin um, repository has got thousands of them for just about any use. And I'm going to go through lots of plugins for different areas of your needs on your website. Um, once again, guys next door would tell you don't go anywhere close to this. Don't use that plugin. Don't use this. Build it yourself. Build it yourself. But we can't all build it ourselves, so we use what's available. Okay, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to decide whether you can use a plugin or not. And then the last approach would be to mix it all up. So I found a great free theme, but it doesn't have this. But there's a great free plugin that does that, and I combine the two. Or there's a free theme, but there's no plugin that does ABC. So I'll buy this plugin for $5, install it in my site, and mix and match like that. So once you've mixed and matched, and you just don't find something you can buy, you can hire a developer for a few uh, hundred bucks to just add this, to just change that, that kind of thing, okay? Okay, so 
that's the camel skinned and ready for roasting. Um, custom development in terms of choosing your developer, um, it's quite tricky. People can basically swindle you left, right, and center if you don't know what's going on. So usually having referrals um, is very important. So no, knowing people that this person has worked with, um, checking out their websites they've developed, that kind of thing. You know, having contracts in place, asking all the right questions, of course. Because developers can speak a very crazy and fantastic language sometimes. Um, so I think trusting your developer and doing everything that you can to try and find somebody to trust. And obviously this comes down to budget as well. Um, some developers, you can trust them with everything, but they're very expensive. So you're going to need to kind of scratch around. And um, there are places like WooThemes, for example, has some developers that works with their themes to modify the themes for you. People they trust, people they refer on. Okay, those kind of things. Always good if you're working with WordPress and you're not developing on your own to develop relationships with people that do the type of stuff that you need done. Whether it's at places like this or just <coughs> blogging in general, commenting on people's websites, getting to know people like that, um, it's an important kind of task. Um, developers will tell you, custom developers will tell you that plugins are toxic. Don't use plugins, let us develop it for you. But then you find that some of them will develop a plugin <laughs> for you and install it to do, to do what you want it done. So you need to kind of understand the language. Developers speak a very specific language and don't always agree with the rest of the world out there. I'm kind of a semi-developer, not, not full on. So I can say that. <laughs> um, the plugin approach. Um, I'm a fan of plugins. I use all kinds of plugins all the time, OK? For my own personal websites, for client websites, um, testing all kinds of strange things. There's a couple of plugins that I installed on here to do a few things that I needed done. I'll show you what those plugins are. Um, WordPress's plugin directory, which you'll find at wordpress.org forward slash extend. Um, I've got a link on, on, on that later on. Um, you find thousands of plugins in categories. I want forms, you get forms. I want events, you get events. You can search, you can see ratings, you can see comments from people. So when you're going to choose a plugin of the WordPress plugin directory, um, I would say that the first thing you need to check is how old is the plugin and when last was it updated. When you go to the plugin single page, let's just see if we can go to one of those pages. You get some data down the side. So under WordPress.org extend plugins. Uh, let's just go to WP Touch. This is one of the plugins that I'm going to speak about a bit later. It's a plugin that allows you to make your website mobile friendly. Okay, so you can check over here on the side. It was last updated very recently. Very good sign. Um, it's compatible or requires a certain version of WordPress. If the compatibility is like two versions down, three versions down, you need to start thinking, do I want to <laughs> consider this or not? Because if the plugin is not being updated regularly, then something could be fishy over there. Check how many people have downloaded it. Two and a half million people. So you're not going to find two and a half million people using something that's just rubbish, you know? Um, that figure is there for a reason. The fact that it's updated, the fact that it's got four stars out of 446. Sometimes you get five stars out of two votes. Mm, his mother and his wife or somebody like that. Okay. So you have to be careful over there. Um, so basically you check some of this data over here and make sure that all those figures are balancing out. And then... You know, always try to test things before you actually go live with something. I'm running um, my presentation on a local version of my site over here as well. Um, and before I put things live, I test it on, on my machine first before I go live. So that's just a bit about plugins.
premium themes. Okay, so we've dealt with custom development, which is somebody building something from complete scratch. Plugins, which is using maybe free themes and extending the functionality with extra add-ons. And then um, using premium theme companies. I've got a post with a whole list of them, some of the best ones, uh, later on. But basically, I've dealt with premium themes quite a lot, and they can be problematic, depending on your needs. Sometimes you have a website that um, you're catering for a very large audience, and it gets lots of traffic all the time. Some premium themes haven't necessarily been tested for high volume websites. So you need to ask a few questions. I'm using it for this, this, and this. Would you recommend that this theme can withstand 20,000 posts on it, or 2 million viewers, or this or that, you know? So you need to ask the um, development companies a few, few questions before you just buy the themes. Also, try to find out other people that use those, those people's themes. How have you found them? You know, have they worked? Have they broken? That kind of thing. Ask questions. Okay, so getting away from some of that stuff, um, I was advised to go a bit through the, the WordPress dashboard, which is the admin area, and show people a few things of how things work in the background there. Okay, I'm not sure at what level of experience everybody is. Yeah, I, I probably you're gonna have people that have hardly touched it and people that are using it every day. Who uses WordPress every day? Okay. Great. So you know how to add a post. You know how to add a widget. Who doesn't know how to add a widget? Don't be shy. OK. Um, you've uploaded images. You've edited images. Cropped them, resized them. Anybody not? No? A few people. OK, so these are some of the areas that I've highlighted um, that you need to understand when you want to be able to work with WordPress nicely and publish whatever you want to and have no problems okay, with your website. And this is only in the dashboard. So firstly, you need to understand that homepage, that dashboard homepage, I'm not going to go through that. Pretty much everybody's logged in there already. You know how to log in. No, anybody don't know how to log into WordPress? <laughs> okay. Pages and posts, basically, pages and posts can be used in very different ways. Um, but essentially, your posts are going to be things that are regularly updated, and your pages are going to be things that are kind of static. You can mix them, though. You can have pages that have lists of posts <coughs> on them using some plugins. Um, you can have posts uh, and pages that link together. A little bit later on, there's a link for a plugin that establishes links between certain posts and certain pages so that in your sidebar, you can show the links between this type of content and that type of content. Um, tags and categories. Everybody know the difference between a tag and a category? OK. I find that when people answer yes to this question, they're actually lying a lot of the time. <laughs> so just quickly to, um, to, to clear the air, a category is generally known as, but can be altered as, a hierarchical taxonomy or hierarchical labeling system. So you have your parent elements, the sub-elements, and the sub-sub-sub-elements like that. And those are usually for broad content divisions, broad divisions like design, coding, photography, these type of things. Okay, And tags refer to, within design, maybe some finer details about, uh, you know, web design or um, flexible web design or even finer grain kind of labeling. So you may have a post in one category. I've got, I've got some clients. Everything is categories uh, from one person's name that was mentioned once in one post two years ago to the main divisions of everything. So you need to understand how to use these two in conjunction with each other so that your users can navigate through your site easily. Some users, they want to see what are the broad divisions. OK, so in my site, for example,
I've used categories to split my presentation up like this. So I've got 27 slides, and these are the different kind of steps that I'm going through. Okay, and it's going in that order, so I've used top level category and some sub level categories. But I've also got some tags, and I haven't added those tags to the sidebar. Let me add them quickly. Does everybody know how to add tags to the sidebar? Everybody's done that. Nobody? Who's not done that before? Okay. I'll stop asking that question now. <laughs> I'll just go into my widgets quickly. Just add the tags. Tag cloud. Let's add it in there. Okay, so I've got these top level categories, okay? And then further down, I've got my tag cloud. And these are like, you know, little extra things that I've mentioned. And a post would have both of these, ideally, so that some people who are interested in very particular things can find those things. And other people that are interested in broad divisions can find those things, okay? And what I've also done is, I'm gonna get to this a bit later, but I've added the categories into a special custom menu over here with a drop down. Those are not page items, those are categories as well. Okay. So, where was I? The driver's seat. Image and media management, I'm going to go through some of that. Um, just see. Actually, let's just skip through it like this to the next post. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the screen, but there is a video and a screenshot over here for some details. There's a very nice uh, service that somebody is providing um, at, a, at a fee of $4, where you can install a plugin into your WordPress dashboard, which has videos of how to do everything in it. It's called Word WP101. And if you go to uh, codecanyon.net, I've got a link for it in the site as well, further down. Um, you can buy this plugin for $4, and there's a video on how to add a page, how to edit images, how to do all the things on that previous list, custom menus, all kinds of different things. And this guy's adding you videos as they go along. I personally, I, I train people on theme development, and I'm gonna talk about that a bit later. Um, but there's loads of video resources like this one over here. If you wanna know how to do something, on WordPress, uh, YouTube is, is a very good source. I mean, this video is from YouTube. It basically gives you a rundown of the dashboard homepage, what's what, how to move things around, how to change things. Uh, I done now. Post pages and other types. I already spoke a bit about pages and posts. I mean, when I teach my theme development course, Another thing that people say they understand but they don't quite understand is the difference between a page and a post. Um, in a CMS style WordPress website, if you want to call it that, you could have a page that consists of posts and pages, many pages. So you may find you have a website that has, uh, let's look at my site quickly. that has a list of the latest news. Most corporate websites, you wanna have something like that. And then you may wanna have a couple of blocks of content. So you could end up with a case where, okay, so this is my home page. Just uh, zoom out. I'm still busy with the site, so don't be too critical. <laughs> um, I've got, Items over here which are coming from a certain type of post, these items just contain images, okay? They're not your standard blog post. 
Then I've got items over here, which could either be posts in a certain category, or they could be separate pages. And I have a certain area over there, whether it's a widget area, sidebar, or somebody codes in different pages. And now at the back end of the site, when I log in, I can go edit the training and consulting page. And this text would change here. So I could have widget one, <laughs> widget two, widget three, or I could have page one, page two, page three, depending on how I want to manage these areas. Okay? Um, and then further down here, I don't have many posts on my site. It's quite new. Um, I've got, would have a list of my actual blog posts, all on the same template. Okay? So it's not your necessarily your typical kind of column, sidebar kind of layout. And you can take that to whatever kind of level you want to. So you could have a home page that has portfolio items as a special kind of content, product items as a special kind of content, four different pages on your home page that rotate um, using a slider thing like this, or a fader. You know, you can mix and match that to quite a crazy level. And that is usually what people are talking about when they say WordPress as a CMS. Okay. Okay, so posts and pages are two types of content. They're actually two post types. A post is a post type called post. <laughs> when you get into the development side of WordPress, then some naming conventions are a bit strange. So, for example, you get sidebars that are at the top and at the bottom. They're not on the side. Um, but that comes from when sidebars only used to be at the side. Uh, a post is a certain type, a post type. <laughs> What's going on? Is that coming from next door? Yes, sir. Oh, shucks, I thought that was somebody's phone. Okay, a page is another post type in WordPress. Okay, so previously you only had these two types of post types, but now you get other types, okay? And those other types, you can define yourself. Um, basically, I've just put a little link to a video here for anybody that doesn't know how to create a post. I mean, I was told that guys, maybe some maybe down there, others maybe it's, uh, I was trying to cater for a range of... So if anybody wants to click on some of these videos, they're very basic how to do certain things. I'm not going to go through those because I think <coughs> you guys are all past that. Um, but this other post type has completely changed the way WordPress gets used as a CMS. So you can have your posts, your regular blog posts in your pages, and you can also have other stuff. And I've made a list down here of what those other things could be. You could have a post type called a book. So if you have a book review site, or maybe one part of your site has a list of books because you sell this wide range of educational materials and some of it are books and others are CDs. And so you've got a post type called a CD, a book, videos, courses, products, general products, portfolio <coughs> items, you name it. You can add whatever post type you want to. And that type that you add can be done in various ways. You can have a developer code that into your theme. You can add a plugin and that's the link to the plugin that I would recommend and the plugin that many people use. It's a very reliable one and it's got a nice easy to use interface to create a custom post type. Uh, more types. We're going to get to a few others that work with this one in a bit. But basically on your site you could then create all these types of content and display them in different parts in your sidebar, on different pages, on different areas of your site, however you want to. Okay, so for example, when it comes to this site over here, I could, with WordPress, you can do things in many different ways. So all the contents on this page could actually be posts from a different category. Header image posts, service category posts, portfolio posts. They could all be posts. Or I could make this a post type called featured image. Or I could make these over here post types called services, okay? And 
You can extend that depending on your needs. Um, at this point, we haven't gotten to how to actually insert those as contents, um, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. Okay, so I would highly recommend this plugin over here. More types, I've used it on a lot of different projects. Generally, nowadays, I try to, as much as I can, code the post types into the theme myself. Because, for example, if this plugin does go out of circulation, the developer doesn't update it anymore, and it's been two years, and you got your post types, and you upgrade WordPress, and something doesn't work with the plugin anymore, you may actually lose the ability to display these post types. So that, this is one of the challenges with using plugins for everything, is that if a developer stops supporting his plugin and WordPress upgrades to a different level and this plugin can't connect anymore with what's going on in the backend, then you lose some functionality. And this has happened to me before. So with this plugin as well, you go to the WordPress repository. I call it a repository for some reason. Uh, always plugin directory. And... Uh, <laughs> That not suppository. Um, this plugin was downloaded 14,000 times, which is quite healthy. It's, it's a relatively new plugin, and it was updated uh, just a week and a half ago. It's got a, uh, a few ratings. Generally, plugins usually have like two, three ratings. This is not too bad. When you scroll down, you'll see there's some feedback here as well. Some people say for version 3.1.4, nobody said anything. For my version, four people said it works, two said it's broken. Now, before you jump to conclusions, sometimes people have no idea what they're doing, and they say the thing is broken, but they broke themselves. <laughs> so you can also go into some of the forums and see what the problems are that people had. And you may find very quickly that the person said it's broken, but he did something silly. Okay? But if lots of people are saying it's broken, then you need to be concerned. Okay? But this plugin, it's a reliable one. I've used it a lot. It hasn't given me any problems. Um, I don't take responsibility for the use of that information uh, on your side, though. <laughs> okay. So, and this is essentially how um, it may work. I don't know if you can, okay, it's a bit blurry, but basically you end up having a little drop down. So that's a product over there. And you could have a add new product, edit products, the same like you have with posts and pages. So when you add new post types, this is what you're going to be doing. You may end up with products, services, events, different types of things in your dashboard over there. Okay? So that's that post. Are there any questions about that? You're going to ask later. Maybe. OK, um, in terms of editing of content, whether it's custom post type, pages, whatever, is everybody familiar with the WYSIWYG editor? You know how to use it? Had any problems with it? Want to change it? No, nothing. OK. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there's, there's something that the WordPress content editor does. It cleans up code in a very uh, sometimes random way. Sometimes it allows certain types of code, sometimes it doesn't, depending on how you've inserted that code. There are plugins <coughs> that prevent it from formatting, from auto-formatting your code that you put into the editor. So if you're working in code view, and you want to take some JavaScript for something that you want to insert, or an iframe or something, you need to install this plugin. Um, I can't get to the, to the um, I mean, if you, if you do, if I forget to add it here, you can add a comment onto this particular slide afterwards, and I'll, I'll give you a link to that plugin. Okay? And it stops WordPress from doing that. The reason why the WordPress editor does that is, Sometimes people do things that they shouldn't be doing with code, and it tries to clean it up. 
Uh, but sometimes it cleans up things it shouldn't be cleaning up. Okay, so it's got a certain way of sanitizing code and cleaning up your formatting and stuff like that. If you, fi if you find that you've put a H1, a header, inside a paragraph item, then that's not correct HTML. What WordPress won't generate that. It will change things a little bit. So if you do things you're not supposed to, it will try and... So that's what happens. So basically, um, this point that I've reached, I wanted to introduce you to... I don't know if... Has anybody used the distraction-free writing mode of WordPress? Okay, let's just go into the dashboard quickly. Add new post. One of the things... and you're going to find that with WordPress, whenever they upgrade, they're trying to improve and make it easier to use the system. Okay? And I've got a slightly modified editor over here. I've installed the plugin to add a few more uh, different elements to my editor. Uh, I've got a link to that a little bit later. Um, if you want to add like custom fonts and custom font colors, font sizes, Tables, I hate tables, but sometimes you need a data table for some table data. You know, <laughs> you don't wanna, you know, developers are, oh, don't use tables for anything, use divs, and you're like, divs, what's that? So there are certain cases when you need tables, and coding them yourself, not always possible. So there's a plugin that allows you to add tables into this area, and edit them, and add your different tabular data in there. Um, we get to that. But what I wanted to talk about was, let me just put an example, post title, blah, de, blah, de, blah. You'll find in the latest version of WordPress, there's this toggle full screen. Actually, they used to have this full screen mode, but it was slightly different. If you click it now, you get a really messed up title. <laughs> Okay, something funny is going on there. Yes, this is the thing about open source software. Uh, when you just install whatever plugins you want to, something, something goes wrong sometimes. So I think possibly my plugin I installed for that special stuff up here is messing with the distraction-free writing mode. But essentially what this thing is, is for writers, you know, bloggers, that are not interested in all the stuff around the area where they're writing. They just want to you know, let it all out. And <laughs> so um, they just want basically no distractions. And WordPress has developed this really nice um, approach over here where you've just got your essential kind of formatting uh, buttons. And you can actually write code in this as well if you're a coder and you just want to write code without any distractions. <laughs> okay, so that's full screen. And you exit full screen mode with a button on the top left. Um, but besides that, and the way I'm going to go, this page. the way I'm going to go is when I show you a free-ish solution, and there's a paid-for one that does something slightly different, I'll also mention it, okay? Because sometimes people want something slightly better. So besides the, um, the built-in distraction-free writing, there's a really, really nice plugin that somebody's developed called Artsy Editor. And Artsy Editor takes that almost like Zen writing kind of thing to another level. Okay, this is their website, artsyeditor.com. And they also have this demo editor. I'm just going to go into the demo quickly. Okay, so they provide a quick login there. Not now. So you'll see over here, it adds its own little artsy tab there. <laughs> Um, and basically, it strips it down even further than the distraction-free writing mode. So you just have your text, and if you wanted to edit something, you double-click on the area, and a little panel appears like that. And you can drag and drop images from your desktop into this thing. 
it uploads them and quickly changes the way the images get cropped and stuff like that. This thing costs, I think, $19 for a personal license and it goes up for use on many websites, that kind of thing. But if you're into like really focusing and you know uh, controlling your environment, um, your writing, editing environment, then these type of tools are really cool. Um, and then on the other side of the spectrum, in the same post, I've got something called Tiny MCE Editor. It's a plugin that essentially allows you to extend the amount of formatting features you have on that tab on top of the editor. So you may only have like H1 to H whatever, and you're like, how do I make the font size this size and this color? and use a special font and all these type of things. So Tiny MCE Advanced is actually a standalone WYSIWYG editor that has been packaged into a plugin. And if you install this, it changes your WordPress editor to use that editor. And you can then drag custom buttons, a table, layout, bolder. You can have, um, you can create basically your own layouts with blocks of content and make them different colors in the background and design your own crazy Christmas tree style uh, post. I, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, but if you wanted to spice things up a lot more than what you're able to and you can't code, then sometimes this is a nice solution. Okay? So under editing content, basically, Distraction-free writing on the other end of the spectrum, tiny MCE editor, which adds more. You know, some people want less, others want more. I'm not going to say it's wrong either way. You know, you do what, what, what's best for you and what you think is going to work for what you're trying to achieve. And then artsy editor. There are other editors. I didn't want to focus on on all of those things, yeah. Um, when you install that uh, tiny uh, editor, is, uh, does it influence the short codes from your theme? Or does that short code, because you know you've got your WYSIWYG short code. Short codes. You know, from the theme, uh, if you've installed the theme. Um, the tiny MCE editor, I think, has a little short code button that allows you to pull short codes and quickly add them in. Um, and then it's also got a styles button, so you can, if you want, 20 different content styles. So you want a box that looks like this and you want a thing that looks like that. You can get a CSS styles developer to write a few styles for you, for your content. Pull it into the MC editor and whenever you want that style, you select the text, drop down, choose yellow block with rounded corners and it pulls the style from, from the style sheet. So you can add custom styles and I uh, correct. I, I speak under correction, but I think the tiny MC editor has uh, the ability to add a short code drop down as well. Um, I'm going to speak about short codes a bit in a bit. Okay. Time. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you have one day to prepare and you. Kind of, uh, let me, I'm going to skip through a lot of this stuff. How much time do I have? No time. <laughs> okay. Um, custom menus. Before, in a few versions back, you had to basically add pages and then child pages to get a menu with the drop downs. But WordPress has now introduced custom menus, which is under appearance menus, depending on what kind of version of WordPress you have and what theme you have. And you can drag and drop pages and categories and posts into your menu and mix them all up. Okay? But your theme needs to have certain areas for custom menus. So if you've got a theme you downloaded for free and it doesn't have that, you can't use this feature. Okay? But you can add this feature to your theme with a little bit of code. Um, I've got some links in this post on how to create a custom menu. There's actually a video in here of how to create a custom menu. Um, skip over that. That's other types of content forms and short codes and those kind of things. I've got a post that discusses um, uploading of images, cutting up of images, image galleries.
permalinks. Everybody worked with permalinks before? Okay, basically just changing that default ugly link structure, very important. Um, changing the dashboard, somebody this morning spoke about it in the other room, how to remove stuff you don't want, there's plugins for that as well. If you don't want to see this link here all the time, you can install a plugin, I've got some plugins linked over there to do that. Um, controlling users, who can do what and who can see what in your site, what can subscribers see, what can they do, what can editors do, what can they not do. You can control that, you can change their roles. Um, this is something that's very important, I have to pause here quickly and if, I, if this is the last thing I, I talk about then it should be this, this one. I spoke about custom <laughs> post types, okay, but associated with that is something called a custom field. Who's worked with custom fields here before? Okay, a few people. This thing really takes WordPress's uh, layout abilities to a whole other level because you're no longer restricted to just what you find in the editor window, that text that you paste in there, or maybe an excerpt. You can then add extra fields, like uh, the example that I'm using here, and this custom field, if you scroll down past the editor, it's by default, there's a little panel under there called custom fields. So I could, as a silly example, associate my mood and the current weather with today's post. Okay, it's, it's just an example to illustrate how it works. But if you did that, you could set up your theme to then show a smiley face, a sad face, or whatever, or a little rain cloud or sun. And you can take that to a whole other level with like custom field thumbnails, custom images in your header that are associated with the post, um, 10 columns per post. Um, if you have a product, product image, description, weight, color, these type of fields. And on this post, I've got another plugin <coughs> that allows you to set up custom fields associated with your special post types so that you can then build more rich uh, structures to your data. Okay. Any questions at the moment? Um, I'll just skip on and until I eat. Am I, am I going for 2.30? No. Uh, Quarter past two. I'm already over. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, essentially, um, as I go on, it gets more complicated and more advanced ways of editing. And I've inserted plugins in each one of these to perform these functions. So making your site mobile friendly, um, being able to add events and being able to add all kinds of extended functionality to your site. And further down in the posts, there's some plugins and themes that allow you to drag and drop page layouts. So you can start with a blank canvas. I want this much content, two columns, three columns, so on. So on. Um, I must apologize. I, because of the time and the pressure that I was put under, I never ran through this and timed it. I only had the time that I had to <laughs> basically throw this all together. Um, and I hope that you have benefited slightly <laughs> from it. And that if you go to the site, um, basically, this is the URL. Um, there's a lot more that I've prepared. Um, so if you have questions, go to each post, post a comment on that topic. If you want a plugin, I'll tell you about it. If there's no plugin, I'll tell you how you should do it. Um, have a discussion with me further than this uh, presentation. Okay. I was going to talk about a theme development course that I am planning on teaching soon. Um, and if anybody's interested in learning the actual coding side of things, then you can also contact me. Um, I've got a course that I was supposed to promote today, but uh, I ran out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time and your patience. <laughs>